So you've no doubt heard of it, more than likely drank a fair amount of it if you're anything like me. And even if you haven't, let's address the question. What is Irish pot still whiskey? And what makes it so unique, so undeniably Irish? Get your pens and notebooks. School is in session. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian here in Chrissy's Bar, Kilkenny. I hope you're keeping well. I was doing a bit of research last week and came across a picture of a famous brand of pot still whiskey. And on the label, I noticed it had said pure pot still whiskey. And looking at my own bottle of the same whiskey on my shelf at home, just a bit more modern, I noticed it said single pot still whiskey. Now, I'm not really up to date on why these terms had changed. So I thought, hey, Let's do a video about that topic. However, once I started researching it, I found it to be a very straightforward answer and knew straight away the video would only equate to being 30 seconds long with the info I had. So I needed to think of something else to talk about. Then I noticed I was staring at one of the books I had in my bookcase and thought, yeah, let's shine a little more light on what pot still whiskey actually is and a little history behind it. Let's kind of do a modern take on it. So what is Irish pot still whiskey and why is it so important to the Irish whiskey category and indeed Ireland? The technical definition to pot still Irish whiskey laid out by the Irish whiskey technical file is defined as a spirit distilled from a mash of a combination of malted barley, unmalted barley and other unmalted cereals. The mash must contain a minimum of 30% malted barley and a minimum of 30% unmalted barley and did incorporate a small percentage of other cereals. Now, what sets Irish pot still whiskey apart from other Irish whiskies and indeed world whiskies is its inclusion of unmalted barley grain. The unmalted barley is an essential ingredient of pot still Irish whiskey and it gives it both a distinctive spicy flavor to the whiskey and influences the texture by giving the whiskey a distinct creamy mouthfeel. Now, none of this is probably new information to those that know a thing or two about pot still whiskey, but what about some of the information around its past, its starting point? It can be a little confusing. Well, to me anyway, with all those dates and all. Pot still Irish whiskey, or Irish whiskey as it once was known as, was the definitive Irish expression of the distiller's art. It was the British Empire's drink of choice, selling about three cases of Irish whiskey to one case of scotch. Irish whiskey had become the second most popular spirit in the record keeping world after rum. Aristocrats to Victorians only wanted Irish whiskey, which is a true testament to its popularity at the time. Well, you might be saying to yourself, there are a lot of spirits around the world that include the use of pot still in their distillations or a pot still in their distillations. And this is very true. Some bourbons, some cognacs use flame fired stills, uh, single malts from Scotland obviously are distilled in copper pot stills, but it's this inclusion of unmalted barley that makes it stand out. And a lot of people think it's mainly down to the malt tax of 1785 imposed by the crown on Irish distillers. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting. According to Fernand O'Connor in his book, A Glass Apart, which if you haven't read, is an amazing account of pot still Irish whiskey, its history, its distillation, and its appreciation. The malt tax was actually levied on English brewers in 1697, and then Scottish distilleries in 1725. However, because of Dublin's parliament at the time, the tax was kept out of Ireland until 1785, most likely to protect our own brewers, like Arthur Guinness. So where am I going with this? Well, when the tax was passed in 1785, there was already common trade knowledge of the use and potential of unmalted barley grains in distilling. In fact, nine years before the tax law was levied, an economist, Adam Smith, wrote, and I quote this from Fanon's book, that in what one called malt spirits, it makes up but a third part of the materials, the other two being raw barley and one third barley and one third wheat. O'Connor then goes on to write that one of the stipulations of the original tax was that Irish distillers were not allowed to use mashes of malted and unmalted barley. Obviously, this is very much ignored, 
but the fact that these practices were prohibited means that it must have been already been in use before the tax. Now, speaking on tax. Since 1661, distilleries in Ireland have been taxed on the volume of spirit they sold. Now, the Irish being Irish and not wanting to pay the British crown anything at all, were very clever and cunning and weren't always very honest with their sales numbers. I mean, why would they be? It was an incredibly hard law to police, so in 1779, the British government decided to tax the size of the stills instead, since they had all this information from when the Crown made Irish distilleries register their stills in 1761. When this law came into force, there was 1,228 distilleries in Ireland. The following year, only 246 registered ones. Everyone had gone underground to avoid tax and began distilling Pucheen. Now, finally, in 1823, the government got rid of the still tax and instead began to collect taxes only on what the distilleries produced, which single-handedly led to an explosion in the Irish distilling landscape. In less than 10 years, Ireland went from 32 licensed whiskey makers to 93. And in 1885, the malt tax was repealed. Now, that can all be a little bit confusing, but it's hugely influential to the production of pot still whiskey, because prior to this happening in 1759, Parliament had no choice but to pass an act prohibiting distillers from using anything but malt, grain, potatoes, and sugar. The Irish whiskey produced before then was fairly dismal and considered to be more aromatic than whiskey that we would kind of drink today. Uh, not to mention, it was downright dangerous. So back once again to Fernando O'Connor, who is currently doing a thesis on the historic mash bills in Ireland from I think it's roughly now 1661 to 1980 that I heard on a podcast that the dates had changed. And some of the things he's uncovered is absolutely incredible. Pot still whiskey that would have been used 30, that would have used 30% on malted barley, 40% malted barley, and maybe say 30% wheat, or a 30, 40, 15, 15 mix of barley types and oats or rye. It's really nothing like what we have today. And I think I read somewhere that Middleton whiskey uses a mash bill of 60, 40 malt to unmalted barley. Um, I can't remember where I heard that or how factual it is. I'm sure someone can correct me on that. If you do know, please leave a link or leave a comment down below. But Fanon is recreating these mash bills today in Boan Distillery. And honestly, I can't wait to try some of them when they're ready. So let's jump forward to current times to today. And bearing in mind some of our recent history where we nearly lost the entire Irish whiskey category, thanks to a number of outside influences like World War I, Prohibition, the Anglo-Irish trade wars, and unfortunately, our own stubbornness and unwillingness to adapt new technology, which was column distilled grain spirit. And when we look back at it, it was actually blended whiskey that saved the Irish whiskey category. And famous names like Jameson and Powers went from creating pure pot still whiskies to blends. And it saved our asses. There are only two real whiskies that have survived the test of time and have always remained pot still whiskies. One of them was Green Spot and the other one was Redbreast. And funnily enough, both were spirit merchants back in the day and actually bought their pot still whiskies from John Jameson. Green Spot has been around since its inception in the early 1900s, while Redbreast was shelled for a short while in the 80s, but has made a huge comeback in recent times and grew as much as 28% in sales in the last year in Ireland alone and over 50% in the USA. So we've come a very, very long way. Now, it wasn't until approximately 2011 when Redbreast 15 year old Pure Pot Still was trying to be brought into the USA that we had to change the wording from Pure Pot Still to Single Pot Still, as the US TTB feared the name Pure would be misleading to the consumer. And this law actually dates back to the 1930s in America and only pertains to distilled spirits. So yeah, we had to change the name from Pure to Single Pot Still in order to be able to get into the USA markets. It's fairly straightforward, really. You can see what I mean about it being a fairly short video if I did it on that. Now, to this day, pot still Irish whiskey, the category itself is growing nicely with new pot still whiskeys coming from Teeling, Great Northern, uh, Neffin, I believe, have one, Dingle, Method and Madness, and many others. It is a true testament to the popularity of the spirit. So there you have it. The history of pot still Irish whiskey in its very, very brief nutshell. Now, arguably, there are many different dates to take into consideration here and many different sides to these stories. So I try to capture everything the best I can here. This was a real labor of love when I started researching for this video. 
And I do have to say that before I go, I want to recommend two books if you want to learn more about the history of Irish whiskey and perhaps maybe the history of pot still Irish whiskey. The first book that is a must in anybody's shelf is The Whiskies of Ireland by Peter Mulryan. Absolutely fantastic read. It goes back to the 1400s of when Look, read it for yourself, I won't go into it, but another one that's an absolutely fantastic read for the single pot still history, A Glass of Pirate by Fanon O'Connor, uh, Irish single pot still whiskey. Two books that are an absolute must to any Irish whiskey enthusiast's uh, library. Check them out, I'll leave some links down below. Now, before I'm gonna go, uh, let me ask you, the viewers, what's your favorite pot still Irish whiskey? Mine? has to be either Redbreast 21, absolutely stunning, or uh, the uh, Green Spot Leoville Barton. It's actually kind of a variation of the regular Green Spot. Absolutely smashing whiskeys and two really good price points. Leave your comments below of your favorite. And of course, if you liked any of that long spiel, be sure to give us a thumbs up, a like, and a follow, or a subscribe. And uh, we might just take a trip very soon to talk to some people who know a lot more about this category than I do. So make sure you stay tuned. All right, so that's it. Until the next time, remember to keep it Irish and pot still Irish this week. We'll chat to you soon. Slancha.